Good morning and welcome to Rose Red Homestead. You may notice we have a hole in our kitchen where our refrigerator used to be. We, we bought a new refrigerator on Black Friday, one which we never could have purchased had it not been on sale for 33% off, which was a great find. And they delivered it yesterday. And so they pulled out our old one, but they couldn't get the new one in. It is uh, because this island, the way it's angled over toward where the refrigerator is, made it impossible for them to uh, get access to get it in. It will fit in there, but not until after we have remodeled our kitchen, which is going to start in about, we think, four to five weeks. So for the time being, our refrigerator is on the opposite wall, right over kind of behind Jim, and we're enjoying it very much. It takes a few extra steps, but that's okay with me. As many of you know, I have been working on getting the uh, pressure canning course developed over the past uh, couple of weeks. And I've really been working hard on it the past couple of days. Now that I am retired, I have more time that I can spend on projects that I have really wanted to do for a very long time. One of the resources that I really trust is a website that is called healthycanning.com. And I urge you to check it out. I'm gonna put the link down below this video so you can check it out. And I have referenced that website almost every lesson in the pressure canning course, which we hope to be able to open up by uh, February the 1st. That's my target date, so we'll see what happens. But as I was doing research, I came across a couple of articles that I feel are very, very important, and I'm gonna share both of those today. And um, actually, they're quite, I find them quite amusing, quite interesting. It, they talk about the Safe Canning Police and Cowboy Canners. And both of those articles are quite scathing. And so I will put the links to both of those articles. I'm not going to be quite that scathing, although I'm going to be extraordinarily blunt because these two groups, they are extremes in the canning world. One is on one side of the extreme, the other is on the other side of the extreme. And both sides make life pretty miserable, particularly for people who try to do things the right way, and especially people who are brand new to canning. You know, I just read a market analysis of who it is that is doing canning right now. I was delighted to find out that there are a great many more people younger than 40 now. It's not just old grandmothers like me who are doing canning, but it is younger people are beginning to flock to canning, and that is fantastic. And um, I know very well, having been in education for nearly 60 years, how um, new learners, especially adult learners, can be very, very vulnerable when they are first starting out learning a brand new skill. Um, for some, it has taken a huge step for them to put themselves out there and want to learn something, for instance, like pressure canning or even water bath canning. And so there are vulnerabilities there for those of us who claim to be educators in, um, and our responsibility is to bring those learners along and to make a very comfortable learning environment where people want to learn and they feel safe in asking any question that they may have. And I am so thankful to say that our community is such a place for brand new people who are coming to canning can come and be safe. Our community is very kind and we share information, we share encouragement, and we share at a girl or at a boy or at a person for everyone who is demonstrating some success. And I love it. We appreciate that so very much. But I want to talk about these two extremes because what is happening, according to healthycanning.com, is that these groups are discouraging people from coming into canning, even scaring them off because of their attitudes. So I want to go through the safe canning police and what their stance is on things, and then we'll turn to cowboy canners. And then at the end, we're going to talk about what a safe and secure mindset should be regarding canning, especially if we are new. So the safe canning police, and by the way, we have had people from both of those extremes come on our site. And Jim and I dispatch with them pretty quickly. 
um, because we don't want anyone discouraging anyone on our site from continuing with their learning curve in developing good and safe canning skills. The safe canning police, you will recognize them because they are self-appointed experts and they're self-appointed vigilantes. They often will cite science, but you can tell that it falls flat because they've never studied science. They claim to be experts, but they don't really know their stuff. Um, you know, in my experience as an educator, every once in a while I would get a student in my university classes who sort of falls into this category. He or she would be more concerned with impressing their peers and spouting off what they feel is um, knowledge that is superior to anyone else's knowledge in the classroom. Now, as the professor in the class, I could spot them in a second because very often their so-called knowledge was very immature and not at all in depth or valid, but it would intimidate others in the classroom and make learning very difficult. And so I would have to deal with that person, which I often did, outside of class and not in front of the rest of the students. Whenever humiliation is involved, whenever, um, whenever cutting people down is involved, you can rest assured that whoever is doing that is not an educator, not a true educator. True educators care about the learning of those who come to them to learn something. So these safe canning police will often go, sometimes they have their own forums, and at other times they go all over the internet visiting everybody else's site like ours, for instance, and come on as if they are the expert and they have a ridiculing tone. They become outraged and they generate hysteria over the smallest little thing. One of the things that they do is that they have banned the USDA for having the nerve to say that you can can a lemon curd and in fact you can even use eggs and dairy. Well, for heaven's sake, if the USDA says it, it has been through a tested, certified laboratory experience and it is okay. But they ridicule and in their own groups ban such blasphemy. Uh, the USDA against itself, who originally said no dairy, no eggs, no this, no that. They've banned Ball, they've banned Bernardin, and in fact, many of them have banned us and other channels like our channel that attempt to present things and be welcoming to all learners and um, try to do things in, a, in the way that um, we adhere to the USDA, but we are not fanatical. So they do not encourage learning. They ridicule and they cause people to stop trying to learn canning. And that is just ridiculous. Um, every once in a while we do get a report that such and such a forum has said that before you can be a member of a, this forum, you have to promise that you will never mention Rose Red Homestead or you will cite any of their information. Well, actually, we get quite a charge out of that because what that tells us is that we're doing a whole lot of things right if we get banned by the safe canning police because they are so fanatical. So don't worry about anything like that on our account. I, we don't actually even give it a second thought. Who has time? We, we focus our time and energy on furthering our own community and our own channel. And you know, every once in a while I make a mistake. Recently, I had to take down a video because I had made a mistake. But I will admit it, and um, good teaching and good learning has all of those elements in it. Uh, we consider ourselves learners as much as we do teachers. And my father was the um, pinnacle of that kind of an example. And so I learned from the best. The flip side of that coin are cowboy canners. And honestly, I just have to chuckle at cowboy canners. They will stick anything in a jar, close up the lid, put it on the shelf to fester, and then feed it to people. I mean, that's basically what they are advocating. They dismiss science-based evidence um, as not being relevant because they would rather fly by the seat of their pants. They take shortcuts and they say things like, well, the old ways are best. We get several people, we have had several people say, 
I don't know why you do such a fuss over following the USDA. My great aunt, my great grandmother, for a hundred years we've been doing things this way in canning and nobody's ever died, so we're just going to stick to the old ways. That is typical of cowboy canners. Um, they will claim that the USDA has brainwashed people and that all you need to do is get a jar to seal and you can do that any way you want to and then the food is fine. They have such firmly held ignorance that they can never be convinced. I don't ever try to convince anyone who is a cowboy canner. They won't be convinced. Um, I, if any of those show up on our, um, on our comments on our channel, I will just say we follow USD guidelines on this channel, period and then just dismiss it. We want everyone to feel welcome, but one thing that we will not tolerate besides rudeness, politics, extreme religion, all of those things, we just want everyone to feel welcome. This is a place for learning, and we will not tolerate anyone who um, makes a comment that is contrary to that. So, if you are in a forum or have joined a Facebook page or anything and they kick you off, it's probably not a place where you should be hanging out if you are wanting to learn the true safe way how to do canning. No one should ever be made to feel humiliated or, or downgraded or to feel like they are ignorant um, because they are a learner. And so seek out those places where you are treated with respect regardless of what level of knowledge you have about canning. So a safe and secure mindset for those who are true students of canning. And you know, um, I consider myself to be a student of canning, a student of pretty much everything, which means that I still go into learning mode all the time. And so does Jim. Sometimes I walk in on Jim and he has his nose in a book learning something new. One thing I love about him is his inquisitive mind. My dad used to say that the day that he didn't learn something new was the day he wanted to change his address, meaning from an earthly existence to a heavenly existence. <laughs> and so, and I would like to think that I'm the same way too, and we all should be that way. Um, so, number one thing, to have this appropriate mindset is to recognize authorities in the field, the true authorities. And you can find those authorities in several places. True authorities are well educated and they know science. They not only have experience, but they have a true scientific background to go along with it. And they are gentle in their approach. Know the safe sources where you can find tested recipes. And that would be the USDA guidelines. That would be the um, university extension offices. And there are some standouts. Pennsylvania is outstanding. Georgia is outstanding. Utah is really, really good. Food scientists, the um, extension agents, these people are the, the true authorities in the field. When people say something like the, the, um, the cowboy canner attitude that, well, this has worked for a hundred years in my family, it's traditional, or that experience, or when somebody says, I've been canning for 50 years, traditions and experience are very important in families, and I don't want to trample on that. But you must add to that the idea that, yes, experience and tradition is important, but in terms of canning, safety is paramount, and so, we need to stay current, and we stay current by knowing what is happening in the canning world right now. I have a sister who was using the Ball Blue Book from 1972 and didn't realize how much things had changed. She no longer uses that once she found out we had a really good discussion on that. But things change. This is a science-based discipline. Canning is. It is. A lot of food science is involved. And science is continuously evolving as better technology comes on the scene, as more knowledge comes on the scene. So stay current. We try to stay current. We can be a source for you for current knowledge. Others can as well. So the last thing is seek to learn from those who welcome learners and to teach from a scientific knowledge base. That is just really, really important. Do not let anyone dissuade you 
from wanting to learn more about canning because they take on the attitude of the safe canning police or the cowboy canners. Um, I don't spend any time going out on the internet looking for those sites. I don't even know what those sites are, nor do I really care. Sadly, I don't know what the other really good channels, like I feel our channel is a really good channel for beginning canners. And I know that there are others out there as well. I just don't know which ones they are. But I bet many of you do. I bet many of you will be able to add to the comments on this um, video and let us know where else you go to get good, safe canning knowledge and experience. So, it is Christmas time. And this is a good time for us to be thinking about how we are going to continue in our canning journey by avoiding the safe canning police and the cowboy canners. So thank you so much for being with us and we will see you very soon with our very next video.